Welcome to the Career Ready Podcast. Learn about resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, interviewing, and all the things you need to be career ready with the Career Services Center at the College of DuPage. I'm one of your hosts, Michelle Malik. Later in today's episode, you will hear my interview with Christina LaSorsa, our interim manager, internship coordinator, and service learning coordinator with the Career Services Center. And I'm another one of your hosts, Pierre Michaels, and I will end the episode with this week's question submitted to our listener mailbag at careerpodcast at cod.edu about job seeking with no job experience. But first, you'll hear from one of our other hosts, Rebecca Harrington. Thanks, Pierre. I'm going to start our episode today with a resource, LinkedIn. So our guest today, as Michelle just told us, is going to be talking about internships. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about how LinkedIn can be a strong resource for finding these opportunities. Secret notice, she actually does talk about LinkedIn in her interview. So that was that was fun because I'm like, yes, I got it. Uh, all right. So LinkedIn is not just for jobs after graduating from college, right? It also has thousands of internship opportunities and most recruiters are there looking for candidates. So let's go over what you need to do to use LinkedIn for this search. I'm gonna focus on three main areas, your profile, your network, and your job search. So first, make sure that you spend time on your profile. Be sure to complete not only the basic recommended sections like your headline, the about section, education and experience, which we're going to be spending more time on those sections, of course, in other episodes in in the future. Um, But also focus on areas that are especially helpful for students who maybe don't have as much experience or maybe haven't completed all of their education yet. So these areas include courses, projects, especially projects you've done in the courses that you're taking, volunteer work, certifications, organizations. So that could be like a student club or organization that you're a part of, or even if you are a student member of a professional organization. Of course, it's a great place to put your honors and awards, skills. So as you're learning skills in your classes, add those. And of course, we've talked about both those kind of hard practical skills, as well as those nice competency skills. And lastly, of course, recommendations. So this is a great time to ask your coworkers, maybe a previous manager, um, you know, it could be a faculty member uh, for any uh, rec- like right to write a quick recommendation on your profile. Um, and then, of course, you can write one for them. Um, But all of those things, if you fill out your profile, you're going to get keywords that are going to appeal to recruiters. So recruiters might even reach out to you because they like your profile. I mean, that's not a guarantee, (laughs) but it does happen. I mean, the job market is competitive right now. And so recruiters are searching LinkedIn for candidates, prospective candidates for internships or also really just for the future. So having your LinkedIn profile kind of filled out and ready to go, I think makes you more likely to maybe fall into one of those searches. Um, any Before we move on to the next section, any tips from you guys as far as like things to include on a profile on LinkedIn as a student looking for an internship? I think you did a good job covering it. You, you named a few of the many sections LinkedIn has, right? Yes. There's a lot more, but I just want to point out that even though LinkedIn has a lot, it's not all encompassing. You may have had some kind Mm -hmm. of experience that doesn't actually fit into one of these categories. Just evaluate those different options and find the area where it fits the best. As an example, I've presented at conferences. LinkedIn doesn't have a spot for that. So I've looked at those different pieces. I think I ended up putting it under publications just because it seemed to fit the best. So evaluate what you've done then think about, okay, where can I put this in on LinkedIn? A lot of it will have an easy fit. Some of it may not. Just find out a different way to put it on there. Yeah, because better to have it on there than not. Absolutely. All right, so then next is be sure to expand your network. So this is the time, right? Connect to classmates, friends, family, family friends, (laughs) 
<laughs> um, professors, some may or may not be comfortable, right? So you just always can ask. Uh, coworkers, uh, and really other professionals in your field that you want to connect with. Um, this is actually a good time as a student to reach out to those uh, professionals and just ask, you know, to connect with them. And you can even reach out to recruiters at companies that you're interested in with a note, of course, um, anytime you're reaching out to someone you don't know, <laughs> make sure that you're including a note why you're reaching out to them and why you're interested in the company. Lastly, though, probably one of the most important groups to reach out to is alumni. Alumni from the school that you're attending, that especially those that are in your field or work at companies that you're interested in. LinkedIn does have um, alumni search right, alumni tool within it. Um, basically, it's kind of throughout the website, but particular places would be on a company page itself. You can actually kind of cross-reference with alumni and then also um, at your college's LinkedIn page. So if you look up, so if you looked up College of DuPage, there's actually a tab that says alumni, and that's a great place to search for people that you might want to connect with. The more connections you have, <laughs> the better opportunity you're going to have with your job search, right? So just to kind of connect those two here, um, and then we can kind of talk more about them. Um, but the job search feature in LinkedIn is, again, not just for those kind of, you know, bigger career jobs. It's also for internships. So when you go to the job search, you can use the filters, which will really help narrow down your search. And one of the filters is you can search just for internships. And then when it brings up those job opportunities, the system will tell you if there are alumni from your college working there or have worked there in the past, as long as you've entered in your education on your profile, circling it back, right? So your profile, <laughs> right, your networking and your uh, job search use um, are all great ways to find these opportunities and then maybe connect with those alumni or people that you're networked with to ask them about the company and about the application process. So what else? I just want to say, and I've said this before, I love the alumni tool. <laughs> I've used it with so many students and clients and they're like, what, this exists? <laughs> so I, that's, I, I just want to say I love it. <laughs> it's a good tool. <laughs> I mean, I always say like, I mean, think about, I don't know, like yourself in 10 years, right? After graduating from a school, if someone from your school reached out to you, a student and was like, hey, I'm studying what you did and I, I'd love to, con you would be like, oh, of course, right? <laughs> or you might say, no, I don't have any time and that's fine, but you're not going to be upset, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be flattered. You're going to be excited to help, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's always okay to reach out. Yeah, uh, you know, you kind of just said it. Uh, our office says it a lot the worst that could happen is you don't hear back, right? That is a no, it's a rejection, however you want to interpret it, but that's all it is. It's you're not hearing back and you get to move on, right? They're not putting you on a blacklist if you reach out to them <laughs> and they're like, how dare they? I'm never interacting with this person ever in the future, right? They're just busy. They've got other things going on, so they don't respond. Um, but building that network, that's, you know, going to be a central theme for different things we talk about throughout this entire episode. LinkedIn is a great hub for that in this digital age that we live in. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, again, a lot of times students feel like, OK, I should I don't need to worry about LinkedIn until I'm about to graduate. Uh, but as we often say on this podcast, right, or just in our department in general, we want you to start early. Right. And this is one of those things you should definitely start early on. Rebecca, thanks for sharing all that information to help us process LinkedIn. And now, Michelle, I know you did a great interview. Can we hear that? Of course. <laughs> This is Michelle Malik, and we're here today with our special guest, Christina LaSorsa. Christina is our interim manager, internship coordinator, and service learning coordinator in the Career Services Center at COD. Christina is going to guide us through how to search for internships effectively and also what to consider when looking for an internship. So thanks for being with us today, Christina, and we're excited to hear from you today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. 
Um, so for the first question, um, before getting into our main topic, I wanted to ask if you could just share a little bit about yourself and your current role at the college. Sure. So I am a community college graduate. Um, I'm also a first-generation student. So I attended College of DuPage um, right after graduating from high school. I later then transferred to NIU to complete my bachelor's degree and then just recently graduated from Benedictine University with my master's in management and organizational behavior. Um, I have a passion for supporting individuals through their um, career exploration and following their career path. Um, as a first-generation student, I feel like I didn't have all of that support. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to be in my position and back at the College of DuPage has been really great. Um, and I've been here just over six years. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm also a first-generation college student, too. So it's nice to connect with another first-gen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We need to support each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so what about um, just defining for us, what is an internship as we talk about the internship search? Because some people may not know. Yeah, so an internship can be defined in a variety of different ways. Um, I am going to go technical and um, use NACE, which is the national organization that we follow in career services, and they define internships as a form of experiential learning that integrates knowledge and theory learned in the classroom with practical application and skills development in a professional setting. So how I would explain that is an internship is a short-term experience for a student to take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it on site. Um, this gives them the ability to connect those two pieces while also exploring as is this industry right for me? Is this company right for me? Um, and that will help them with their their next steps. Yeah, thanks for sharing what an actual internship is. And I think it's really important with internships, you kind of learn about yourself throughout the process, right? So you learn what your strengths are, what your improvements are. You learn what kind of industries you like. I know I've had personal experiences with internships too. And because of those internships, I decided what industry I wanted to go into after it. So yeah, that's excellent. And that that's huge that you were able to do an internship and then find what your next steps were. I tell students that even if they do do an internship and it's not everything that they wanted or maybe it made them change their mind, that that's just as valuable as finding that opportunity that they want to do moving forward. I think knowing what you don't want to do is just as important. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are a few things that someone should consider when looking for an internship? Yeah. So for our students specifically, my main priority for them is to make sure that they can devote the appropriate time for that. So students need to consider what else they're juggling to see if they can fit in an internship. So primarily it's part-time opportunities during the fall and spring semester. But if we have a student who's juggling multiple classes and working part-time, possibly full-time, or have other obligations, that's the biggest thing that they need to consider. Um, next to that is, can they pursue a paid or unpaid opportunity? Okay, perfect. Yeah, those are some good things to consider off the bat, especially um, having enough time, right? Because I feel like for the student or the person doing the internship, they have to have enough time to dedicate to that opportunity to make it worth it for themselves and also for the employer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what are some resources that you would recommend um, using when searching for internships? So there's plenty of resources out there. Of course, um, we want to utilize the Career Services Center. A student who is looking for an internship cannot just you know, show up at the door with nothing in their hands. So career services will help in those early resources, preparing their resume, cover letter, and even with their interviewing skills. Um, but then the resources to actually secure and find those opportunities are Chaps Get Hired, the Electronic Job Board, LinkedIn, and um, students should utilize their faculty as a resource. So letting them know, this is what I'm interested I interested in. I want to pursue an internship for the summer term, let's say. Um, their faculty may also be working in the industry still, or at least have contacts still in that industry to maybe encourage their, their friend or their employer partner to come and, and recruit from COD. 
Yeah. And I would say with LinkedIn, oh my gosh, that is such a valuable resource. Before I started working here, I didn't know all of the tools that were in LinkedIn. So um, yeah, looking for jobs and internships there has been very helpful, I know, for the clients that I work with. Um, and then also that alumni tab where you can connect with different individuals that went to the same school as you. So thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. yeah. What about timing wise? When is the best time to look for an internship opportunity? The best time for a student to start looking for an internship is three to six months before they want to pursue that opportunity. Students need to think about what time of year they want to do an internship, and then they can build backwards. I always tell a student, give yourself six months. You can start with your professional documents, um, but then that will give them plenty of time to prepare themselves to submit that application or applications um, and then be ready for when those interview calls come in. Yeah, so thanks for sharing the timeline because I feel like it's important to talk about you can't just, you know, a month before the internship application is due, start preparing yourself, right? So really having enough time to, like you said, prepare your professional documents, get in contact with people, find those opportunities is is going to um, be important in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. A student wants to be as prepared as possible moving into a new experience, right? So mm-hmm. that, that six-month mark um, or that start should, should propel that. So let's talk about paid and unpaid internships. Um, so what do you think should be considered when securing a paid internship versus an unpaid internship? And then also, um, are paid internships common? Sure. So what a student should consider when looking for an internship in general is, is the opportunity speaking to them from a learning perspective. So if you were to look at an internship description to a job description, they would be written very differently. Um, Where that paid and unpaid piece comes in, that really is up to the student if they can pursue that opportunity. We are seeing both. You know, there are still plenty of unpaid opportunities out there, but employers are starting to offer more paid opportunities. It still depends on the industry, too, um, and it can change across the board. So although the employer is deciding if it's paid or unpaid, um, following the fact sheet number 71 with the Department of Labor, um, students need to decide how they can best spend their time for this opportunity. That makes sense. And I I feel like it's good to know that there are paid opportunities out there. Um, I know when I was looking for internships, I didn't really come across those. I mean, that was a long time ago, but <laughs> um, but that's good to know if a student is seeking out a paid internship, they have that opportunity available to them. Yeah, and on CHEPS Get Hired, our electronic job board, there is an option for a student to select paid or unpaid in their search, so they're fully aware of what opportunities there are. When I meet with students and they say, well, it doesn't matter, I can do either way, of course, check both of those and let's see all of the opportunities available. Um, But the student ultimately decides what's best for them. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned CHAPS Get Hired, and I wanted to just kind of uh, clarify something for our listeners tuning in, maybe new listeners. Um, We talked about CHAPS Get Hired in season one, but with CHAPS Get Hired, students and community members have access to that. So if you are a new listener, but you didn't go to COD, you can still sign up for uh, CHAPS Get Hired for free. So just wanted to plug that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and there's lots of opportunities on there. So if you're looking for anything right now, get on chips, get hired. Wonderful. Um, So what about if a company that someone is interested in doesn't have internship opportunities available? um, How would you recommend someone approach a conversation with that employer or company? Sure. So uh, I always tell students the worst thing that can ever happen is that someone will say no. So I encourage them to like every student, do their research on that company ahead of time. Really understand, is this somewhere that you're going to want to work short-term or long-term? Because again, internships can turn into additional opportunities. Um, But to contact their HR department, reach out to them right away, introduce themselves as a student, what they're interested in, why they're interested in that company, and see if someone would be interested in talking to them about an internship. Some employers may not have a program established because they don't have the time to do it and that they're not, it's not that they're not open to hiring interns, it's they just might not have the time and the capacity to serve the student the best way that they can. But if a student wants to to go for it, I say go for it, reach out. Um, And if it doesn't work, then we can start searching somewhere else. 
Yeah. And I think, too, it's important to reach out even if the answer is no, because it, that could always turn into an opportunity down the line that the student or the person wanting the internship doesn't even know about. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So to wrap up our interview here, I just wanted to ask, is there any additional advice that you'd like to offer our listeners? Yeah. So the first thing will be visit your career center if it's not the College of DuPage's Career Services Center. I mentioned that I went to NIU and I utilized their career center um, for my resume to re be reviewed in addition to their internship coordinator. So that is how I secured my internship. Um, in addition, connect with your faculty members. They may be working in the industry still or have contacts in the industry um, and may be able to provide opportunities um, for students that way in addition to connecting to their campus. So these are all resources um, for our students, for the community, and for um, our alumni. But a lot of times people don't realize that they need to take advantage of their resources. We can only provide so much, and then you need to utilize them. So use your resources that are available to you, and don't be afraid to ask questions. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information. It's been really useful, um, and I think it'll help a lot of our listeners with the internship search process and just kind of making them, making them think about how to get started with that search. Yeah, and if anyone has additional questions, I'm happy to answer them, and I can be reached at internships at cod.edu. So, Michelle, that was a great interview. I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to bring that to the podcast. Yeah, it was super fun um, interviewing Christina. She's really great. Um, I was just wondering what you all kind of thought about the interview in terms of anything you found interesting. Is there anything within your personal internship search that you've done that was helpful? Yeah, well, for me, <laughs> my internship was a search was a long, long time ago. But I did <laughs> want to mention actually something that I thought of uh, is it talking about like paid versus unpaid and all of that. And, you know, there's more we can always talk about with it. But one thing that people do, uh, students do that I did is take your current position and turn it into an internship. Oh. So I had actually found a position that was in uh, the, the, you know, the er area that I wanted to work in. Um, and then I turned it into an internship. And I think that kind of goes a little bit with what she was talking about as far as the difference being, you know, my quote unquote job was more like paperwork, like basic stuff. But when you make it an internship, then, you know, they need to offer to do more with you. You know what I mean? That you need to be able to advance and kind of learn other things, observe people and, and do other kinds of projects. Uh, and I think that's important. So, uh, you know, and especially if you make it an academic internship mm -hmm. where you're getting credit for it, then that's nice because I think it kind of forces <laughs> the issue with the employer that, you know, yes, this needs to be a bit more than just mm -hmm. like kind of the regular job that this person is doing. But I think that's a, that's something to think about. I mean, even if you're working you know, if you're working in a manufacturing environment, let's say, and you just were working on the floor and your interest is even in accounting, let's say, well, you know what? Talk to your employer. Maybe they would be willing to let you do a part time internship in their accounting department as part of your job. Um, so, you know, just something to think about. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I haven't I haven't thought of that before. And also, too, I know Christina was talking about how um, students and people in general, they may not have a lot of time to do an internship. So if you can turn your position into an internship or work at the same company, then that's wonderful. That was my plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's super helpful. Yeah, and something kind of along those lines uh, – you know, just to slap the word internship on it doesn't mean it became an internship, mm -hmm. right? It, the internship is really about the experience. So you can't turn what you're currently doing into an internship, right? It has to be a new opportunity at that organization or whatever opportunity you're looking for. You have to really evaluate these descriptions employers are providing because you want to make sure that it is a learning development opportunity, that they're going to be there to support you through that process where you get to apply this academic knowledge that you've been acquiring 
Because if you're not, it's not an internship. Mm-hmm. Right. You're just calling it that, but it's really just <laughs> <laughs> just a regular, <laughs> and regular job. And <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes those postings are out there. So you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I also wanted to just bring in a few statistics that I learned. So we always talk about NACE, of mm-hmm. course. And I went to a NACE presentation uh, a few months ago, and they talked about internships there as well. And, and uh, you know, Christina mentioned um, paid versus unpaid. So she's right on track. About half, um, 52% are paid. 47% are unpaid, according to their data. Um, But I thought, interesting, so 45% of internships are private or for profit, Mm -hmm. which I know I've heard her say those are more often paid. Um, And then the other half is Nonprofit is like 30% state and local government, which I think we don't often think about as a place. That's 20%. And then only 4% is federal, but still, that's an opportunity as well. Um, But I do think sometimes those nonprofit government ones, not that they can't be paid, because I'm sure that they are, but maybe they're a little more likely to be unpaid. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that I thought was interesting, I hadn't even thought about and I don't know why, is modality, meaning in-person, hybrid, or virtual. Mm -hmm. So the majority of internships this past year have been in-person, like 64%, almost 65%, and then hybrid is 16% and virtual is 18%. And my guess is those might... Maybe they'll they'll level out at some point, but I do think internships, people do think of it as in person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, going back to this idea of it being a learning opportunity, right. not that we can't learn virtually, but to have that supervisor there coaching you, it's a lot easier for them to not be looking over your shoulder, but to be there mm-hmm. with you and seeing your development in person. Mm-hmm. And then I just had one other um, thought, which was, uh, I just kind of go with... Um, you know, can you talk to somebody mm-hmm. about, can you talk to an employer about internship opportunities? Um, something that Pierre and I talk a lot about is doing um, career conversations or informational interviews with just professionals and usually looking at the manager or director level. So the idea is you're not asking them directly mm-hmm. for an internship. The idea is reach out to those that are really in the department that have the hiring capability uh, and just ask for a 20 minute conversation about your career or about their career really um, and the industry, that kind of stuff. And then the idea is hopefully (laughs) as you're talking to them, you know, um, Pierre, what is it that we always say they should ask as far as like an internship is like, what do they look for in an intern? That kind of thing, I think, or, you know, what might you have in the future? You know what I mean? Like instead of asking specifically Mm -hmm. like, do you have an internship? Just kind of like, what do you look for an internship or what should I, what advice would you give me as I'm looking for an internship? And then it just brings the word into the conversation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then that way, you know, they may have something, they may not, but even if they don't, I think you kind of mentioned this uh, before, like, you know, they might know someone, Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe they'll keep you in mind for the future. So just, you know, another kind of thing that that LinkedIn (laughs) stuff hopefully helps with. Um, I, you know, I think um, it don't keep it a secret, right? This is time to reach out to everybody. Yeah. And going back to what you were saying, asking that question, if you're asking something like what kind of skills would be needed for Mm -hmm. this position or what are you looking for? So it's a conversation. You're not necessarily saying, hey, I want this internship, but you get an understanding of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the employer, if they have an internship opportunity or not, they always want good talent. They'll make something happen if they Mm -hmm. see that you have that value. Great point. So then if you could get that list of skills, what they're really looking for, And then you could say, well, let me tell you a little bit more about my experience. And then you hit on these skill sets they're looking for. Well, now they're really thinking about you in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that point. Like they may have not even thought about doing an internship before. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I have someone in front of me. (laughs) Right. That that, that, that could be really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had another question. Um, So what was your favorite internship, assuming that you all did internships? Well, I only had one. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, 
yeah, I guess I would say that. I also, I mean, I did, uh, I, I was in education, so I had student teaching. But oh, I, yeah. But I mean, I, mean, I guess. Kind of similar, right? Yeah, that was, that was fun. But no, I, I, uh, I did enjoy my internship, though. Like, it was um, really helpful, and it absolutely landed me my first job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I d- like, I was, I didn't work there. They didn't have a position for me there. But because of that experience is why I got my first job, for sure. Yeah, and I had different practicum learning opportunities, you know, through the program, they weren't called an internship, but they were, you know, a slimmed down internship. And then I had an internship here at College of DuPage, which I absolutely loved. And, you know, <laughs> if you uh, listen to my you know, bonus episode interview, I talk about that. Um, so that was uh, a great opportunity that did, you know, lead to connections mm-hmm. and help me get back to College of DuPage later on in my career. That's wonderful. Yeah, I was thinking about I had um, an internship at an adoption agency. I was very interested in figuring out if I wanted to be a social worker or not. Um, So although I figured out that I do not I didn't want to be a social worker, it was still really cool to have that experience. And like Christina was talking about earlier, just figuring out what you also maybe don't like and what direction you want to go in next. Like it's not a bad thing if it turns out right. to be this is not what, you know, better to learn now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> than when you're in the field, right? right. <laughs> but it was a great experience. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts, everyone. Thanks for a great conversation. Yeah, it was such a great conversation. And knowing we were going to be talking about internships, I wanted to select a question that I thought would build off of what we would be talking about. And I think it does in different ways. So this week's question is, how can I become a competitive candidate without job experience? So we've been talking about it a lot throughout this episode so far. Internships are a great way to gain experience, a great way to prepare you for that future opportunity, those career and job paths that you may be going down. But internships aren't the only way to gain experience. We heard this in the interview that Sometimes your schedule doesn't allow for you to commit to an internship, but there are still things that you could be doing to help you develop as you move forward. The types of involvement can vary based on your personal goals, those opportunities, your availability. Um, So let's just think about being a student and getting involved. So this could be projects that you're doing in the class, or maybe you're involved with the student club. It doesn't matter if it's an academic career type club or a social club. Either way, there's a lot of value in it as long as you're involved. Employers are focused in on how you apply yourself, how you engage with others, and how you develop your skill set. So with that in mind, also consider other ways that you could be involved outside of the college setting. Consider volunteer experience or maybe some kind of community engagement, or maybe it's independent projects and skill building hobbies that relate to your desired field and career objective. You know, hobbies kind of fall in a gray area at times, but as long as you can justify them and relate them back to your goals, they're a great thing to be presenting and helping you become that competitive candidate. So what you want to be making sure is you're developing these core competencies. We emphasize a lot throughout the podcast and really preparing yourself to be a competitive candidate. And to speaking uh, from my own personal experience, Uh, When I was starting out as a professional, my internship and other volunteer opportunities really helped me build that confidence and gave me a lot to share as I was then set to promote my abilities in the job search. And so if you uh, had an experience that prepared you for your future and you want to share it with us, go ahead and leave a comment in your podcast player or find us on social media at COD Career Center. And as always, if you have a question for us, remember you can submit it to careerpodcast at cod.edu or on social media at COD Career Center. Thanks to all of our listeners and special thanks to Christina Lasorsa for joining us on the podcast. We hope you feel better prepared to search for internships and be sure to join us for our next episode as we talk about how to develop and share your elevator pitch.